making the final table. It's the next hurdle on the way to poker immortality. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! I wake up in my bed and realize it's not all a dream. I can't believe that I'm this deep into the tournament. I've been working so hard for the past week and a half just to get to the final table. Yeah! If I make the final table, I'm very, very confident I will win. Tonight, 18 players begin a game of musical chairs worth over $12 million. Will any be able to slow the charge of chip leader Jamie Gold? I don't even know what to think. I, I'm, I, I'm not feeling anything. I'm just in the zone. Yes. Season pro Alan Cunningham is the biggest name remaining. I'm all in. But surrounded yes, by baby. wild cards, will his experience be enough? At this point, not winning it will be a big loss. I go all in. To win the main event, you must first make it to the final table. Yeah! Yes! By night's end, there will be only nine. Just. Welcome once again to the main event and the 2006 World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, where this massive poker room inside the Rio now holds just two tables. Looking at the cash drill chip count, Jamie Gold and Alan Cunningham sit far atop, having pulled away from the field. In seventh place, Doug Kim with a chance to become the youngest main event winner ever. Looking at the bottom half of the field, Jeffrey Lissandro is 13th. Richard Lee and Paul Wasica are the short stacks. The top 12 finishers will be millionaires. And by the end of the night, we'll have our final table. Hello, everybody. I'm Lon McCarron alongside Norman Chad. We often hear players say, if I can just make it to the final table, anything can happen. Well, tonight, we will set our final table. And barring a cataclysmic meltdown, one thing seems certain, Jamie Gold has his seat reserved. For Jamie Gold not to make the final table, Lon, I believe he would have to leave the country or admit to kidnapping the Lindbergh baby. He's had the chip lead here forever. Ah, but in his rearview mirror, if he has a rearview mirror, he might see the ominous presence of Alan Cunningham. If I were Gold, I wouldn't look back. Jamie Gold has been in the driver's seat, but there are some major potholes he's going to have to avoid. At his right, Jeff Lissandro is one of them, a grizzled veteran of poker's toughest venues. And to Gold's left, Alan Cunningham, the only bracelet winner left in the field, the 2005 World Series Player of the Year. On the Milwaukee's best light pocket cam, Cunningham with ace, queen of clubs. And looking at his shirt, I'm not sure what dog is sponsoring him today. <laughs> Cunningham raises it up to 210,000. Paul Wasica, couple of kings for Paul. That's a welcome sight when you're short stacked. And the short stack goes into the middle, all in for Paul Wasica. David Einhorn says, good luck, I'm not gonna play with you. Lee Force, nicknamed Jungle Boy, will fold, as does Rhett Butler and Lissandra. Six everything? Six sixty. Not much more for Cunningham to call, and he will, and Paul Waska will be at risk. Paul Waska all in. He finished ninth in his first tournament ever. About 100 players were in it, and he says he didn't even know what a blind was at the time. That is Paul's family, his dad, mom, and sister watching intently as Alan Cunningham has a shot at knocking him off. Paul bought into this tournament. He already has his money's worth. Let's see if he can keep the run going. Flop is 9-10-5. Wasika's kings are still best. These are two of the better 20-somethings you'll see playing poker. Cunningham is established. Wasika trying to establish himself and trying to survive this all in. Now the turn card. Ten of clubs. A flush draw for Cunningham will make Wasika sweat. A lot more ways for Cunningham to knock him out now. Cunningham would need an ace or any club other than a king to eliminate Paul Wasika. River card is a seven of hearts. And Wasika hangs in there. There's a happy team, Wasika. It means a little bit more to him than it does to you. <laughs> Wasika shows very little emotion at the table. That was a real celebration from him. So Paul Wasika doubles up to a million and a half chips now. He's no longer the short stack. That honor belongs to Richard Lee from San Antonio. He has been living on the edge of elimination lately. Dan Nassif, a newspaper account executive, started the day third in chips. They and the rest of this table are watching Cirrus Jamshidi take on Michael Binger after the river card. Binger has the check mark holding a pair of queens, and he checks the river. Now Jamshidi with nothing. He can only hope to bluff Binger out of the hand, and he is going to bet 800,000. 
He bluffed at this on the flop. Binger called, and now he's bluffing at it again. Binger recently got his Ph.D. in physics from Stanford. He's going to make the call, and that will win him the hand. So Jim Sheedy gives up a lot of chips to Michael Binger. Yeah. There is Michael's brother Nick and Michael's girlfriend Beth Gilroy, part of the huge Binger cheering section. Binger supported himself with online poker winnings when he was in grad school, and he's had a pretty smooth ride in this main event. So Michael Binger now over six million chips. Let's get back to our feature table. The blinds at 30,000 and 60,000. There is David Einhorn, a hedge fund manager who says he will donate all his main event winnings to Parkinson's disease research. He's got Ace King and will raise it up to 225,000. We force folds to Rhett Butler, insurance agent from Maryland with a couple of tens. Rhett is an insurance agent, Lon, but if he had his way, he would play poker and golf every day, all day. Who wouldn't? Come on, let's be honest. Lissandro folds again. Jamie Gold now. In the big blind. A couple of hearts, a king and a six. Uh, I said it in our last telecast, Lon, it doesn't matter what two cards he plays, Jamie Gold always wins the hand. He hits the flop again, trip sixes for our chip leader. <laughs> See, I'm smarter than I look. <laughs> Gold checks to Einhorn. 500. Who bets Ouch. 500,000. A bad spot for David Einhorn to posture at this pot. Butler had a nice pocket pair, but they go into the muck. And now Jamie Gold with three of a kind. All right, I call. Makes the call, of course. And he will just smooth call those sixes. Oh, what was that? Now our turn card is a 10. Butler kicking himself. Would have hit a full house there. Einhorn's bet got him out. Gold checks. And Einhorn checks right behind him. A three of clubs, a blank. Jamie Gold earns the check mark. I'll bet 800. Gold can wait no longer, has to do his own bidding now. I got a hand. Your money's going to charity, don't waste it. Why don't you join me in that? Mine is, to my dad. He's got Lou Gehrig's disease, it's going right to him. So let me take this down. Well, Einhorn can only beat a bluff. Jamie's been known to bluff. Okay. Einhorn is gonna believe him and will give up his cards. So Jamie Gold takes down another pot. And increases his batting average. He could be the next 400 hitter. David Einhorn gave up a lot of chips, but it could have been worse. Butler missed a golden opportunity to pick up some chips on the leader. But in the end, Jamie Gold had clear sailing on the river. The 2006 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Brewed for a man's taste. Miller Brewing Company and in part by Harris Entertainment, home of the world's richest poker tournament. The World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio where we have an all-in situation. David Einhorn is risking everything he's got with a pair of queens. Once again hooked up against Jamie Gold who has two pair queens and sixes as we wait for the river card. Gold's out flopped Einhorn twice in short order and it's probably gonna cost Einhorn his tournament life. He needs a king or a jack to stay alive. River card is an eight. Yes, baby. Gold takes the hand, and Jane Gold watches her son increase his chip lead. David Einhorn's mom, Nancy, beams with pride as her son leaves in 18th place from the 2006 main event. And surprise, surprise, Jamie Gold collects another bounty. So what's new in this main event? And David Einhorn to the exit, gets a group hug from his supporters, all his winnings going to Parkinson's research. Einhorn's grandfather suffers from the disease. What, 600 and change? What's that? 600 plus? Almost $660,000 will go to the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research. Well done, David Einhorn. Meanwhile, at the other table, Richard Lee taking the ultimate stand. All in. Lee is all in with a short stack. He's got ace jack. His opponent, none other than Ireland's John McGill, who nearly took all of Lee's chips in a previous showdown. McGill trails with ace 10. Lee has been on the edge of going out of here since he bluffed off most of his chips against McGill. In fact, Lee thought he bluffed off all his chips that time. He thought he was all in and out of here, but he still had a few chips left. Richard Lee is all in, but he's ahead. 
His wife and daughters watching every hand he plays. Jack, baby. Here comes the flop. It is a 10 yes. 9 7. McGill takes the lead with a pair of 10s. Lee picks up a straight draw, but he's in a lot of trouble, and this time it is for all his chips. And now the turn card. Oh, it's an eight! A jack high straight for Richard Lee. But McGill does pick up a flush draw. Lee turns the tables. Now a jack on the river, they would split the pot with identical straights. Unless it's a jack of spades, any spade, and McGill knocks out Lee. And now the river is a red five. That'll work too. Richard Lee wins the pot and doubles up, coming from behind against John McGill. It seems like Richard Lee's about to leave us at any moment, and he sticks around. Now, it didn't seem concerned when he fell behind. It's like he almost knew what was going to happen. As weird as it might sound, I've dreamed things that have come true before. My wife and I were flying up to Las Vegas, and I fell asleep on the plane, and I had a very vivid dream that I won the... World Series of Poker, I woke up and I told her, I said, I'm going to win this tournament. And she said, that's good, honey. <laughs> that was it. I know it probably sounds pretty off the wall, and I don't go and rattle the beads and shake the incense and get all weird or anything, but I have pretty good intuition, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to win this tournament. Funny thing is, Lon, I had a dream when I was flying here that I was interviewing Richard Lee, but it was on Fear Factor. <laughs> and our tournament update, 17 players left. Chip leader Jamie Gold with 21.1 million. Jeff Lissandro has pocket jacks. Several years ago, Lissandro played Johnny Chan heads up one night at a Los Angeles casino. He didn't even know it was Chan. He beat him for $40,000, which actually staked him at that time. And now Johnny Chan is mentoring our chip leader, Jamie Gold, who has 8-5 of diamonds. After Lissandra called the big blind, Jamie Gold will do likewise. And Jamie decided to take on the pro Lissandra with those modest holdings. Cunningham folded. Those are the deuces of Luke Chung. Big blind is at 80,000. And Chung will play. Over to William Thorson. Unsuited connectors at 10-9. The more players that limp into the pot increases the chances that even more players want to get in for the pot odds. And indeed, Thorson will join the party. Now to Paul Wasica with pocket kings and four callers in front of him. And that is, again, a welcome sight for Wasica, those kings. <laughs> and there go all his chips again. Almost two million chips from Wasica into the pot. From the big blind, Leaf Force folds. And now this is a big moment for Lissandro. This would be for almost all of his chips. And he will call with the pocket jacks. So now behind him, we see Gold and Chung get out of the way, as does Thorson. So heads up, Wasika's Kings against Lissandro's Jacks. Wasika started the day as the short stack, now in a dominating position over Lissandro to pick up a lot more chips. Paul Wasika, mostly an online high limit cash player. Jeff Lissandro loves the live high limit games anywhere he can find them around the globe. Here we go to the flop. 9-10-3, Wasik is still in command with Pocket Kings. And Lissandro, the most accomplished player in this room, along with Alan Cunningham, knows he's in deep trouble. Turn card is a seven, Lissandro with a little hope there with a straight draw. Lissandro still without a World Series bracelet, and his chances this year are slipping away. Wasika's supporters hoping he can survive one more card. To knock out Wasika, Lissandro needs a jack or an eight. River card is a queen, and Wasika does it again. He survives another all in and doubles up to Jeffrey Lissandro, who is crippled. Wasika gets very healthy. Lissandro gets hit hard. Lissandro now down to 95,000 chips. And how about Paul Wasika? He started this session as the short stack and now enjoys 4.3 million chips. Ladies and gentlemen, finishing in 17th place, Jeffrey Lissandro. After that crippling hand against Paul Wasika, Jeffrey Lissandro was eliminated in 17th place by Red Butler. Yeah. And then the action became fast and furious as Sirius Jamshidi was quick to follow in 16th place thanks to Richard Lee. Yeah. And right on Jamshidi's tails, Kevin Aronson was eliminated in 15th place by Eric Freiberg. 
And just like that, the main event is down to 14 players and closer to 12 millionaires. Jamie Gold still leads our cash roll chip count with 21 and a half million. Luke Chung with 1.9 million is our short stack. All right, let's get back to our feature table. With those eliminations, players are shifted around a little bit. Jamie Gold still here at the feature table. Doug Kim has joined it and brought his 4.6 million chips. Kim, 22 years old, one of four players left who could supplant Phil Hellmuth as the youngest ever to win the main event. Pocket deuces, he'll call the big blind. Now to Jamie Gold, a suited ace jack. Gold trying to become the youngest talent agent turned TV producer to win the main event. <laughs> He's 36 years old. Over to Alan Cunningham, 9-6 of clubs. Cunningham trying to become the youngest player with a dog on his shirt you to win stop it? the main event. He's 29 years old, okay? Over to Luke Chung, Who ace I five of clubs. I believe is trying to become the youngest corporate <laughs> finance manager to win the main event. He calls the big blind to William Thorson. I think he's 23 years old. Don't know much about him. <laughs> Thorson checks his option five to the flop once again. Here we go. Ace five four. Chung with aces up to grab the lead. Oh, well, what's he checking aces up for? Thorson checks also. Kim with deuces bets four hundred thousand. Gold calls. Cunningham folds. All in. And Luke all Chung in. aces Three. up. There he goes. Th all in. That's different. My my apologies to Luke Chung and his immediate family. A check raise. All in. Thorson folded. I call. Kim folded, and Jamie Gold's going to go with him with a pair of aces. Nice hand. Thanks. Caught me. Jamie could easily afford it. Jamie thought he had the best hand, but Chung with aces up in command. Out of the turn card. Chung all in, but ahead. It is a jazz, baby! Wow! Gold into the lead now. Jeez. Who couldn't see that coming? He, he wins when he's ahead, he wins when he's behind, he wins when he's not even in the hand. And suddenly Chung now needs to catch a card to stay alive. Chung needs a five or he is wamboozled. River is a king and Chung is gone. Once again, a victim of our chip litter, Jamie Gold. Chung goes out in 14th place, wins over $900,000. And I believe Jamie Gold now has knocked out close to 8,000 players in this main event. Oh, uh, looking to his mom saying, hey, I can do no wrong, mom. I'm sure you guys aren't upset about that. It's a good thing, right? Another one out. I don't know. I don't know if you, I want you to double. I What's think? the difference with two more million for me when I have 25? What do you care? You want someone else. Trust me, you with your stack? Are you kidding? What's the difference to me? I'm still your killer. It, trust me, you want him out. That was a good thing for you. And with one more player out, we will have our final 12. They'll all be millionaires. When you're hot, you're hot. For Luke Chung, however, that had to hurt. Bad beats like that cause a lot of mental anguish for players. But this game can also bring physical pain as well, as we find out in this edition of The Nuts. A lot of people don't know this about poker. It's a very dangerous sport. Yo, you could get hurt. I've got all sorts of like rashes, cuts, strains. Um, there are obstacles we face as players that you know you won't see NFL players have to worry about. Paper cuts. Cards sometimes get they get thrown into the tips of your fingers and you get cuts on the tips of your fingers. Some of these tables have really pointy bars and you just kick it with the wrong side of your knee. Oh. Some people lean back too far in their chairs. And they fall over every once in a while. I seen somebody die at the table. Picked up two aces and they, they died. But they, they were actually, they were actually, it was an old person. I don't know if it was related. I'm suicidal many a times. Is that considered being injured after you lost all your money? I want to hang myself today. <laughs> I'm playing so bad. Diamonds! Give me a diamond! No! I've hurt my knuckle before because I go like this. Right? And that sometimes hurts. Like, for instance, that hurt. I now wish I hadn't have done that, but it's too late. The most common injury actually is a bruised ego. It's known as a Helmuth. <laughs> Back to the feature table, the World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Our chip leader, Jamie Gold, and his mentor, Johnny Chan, right over his shoulder. William Thorson, first to act. Thorson with pocket jacks. Well, one of the four players who can become the youngest ever to win the main event. Thorson's going to raise it up. Makes it 260,000 to go. Table folds over to Jamie Gold. Jamie with pocket king. Uh, okay, so wow. William Thorson is going to be eliminated in what place, Lon? <laughs> this would be 13th place. Okay. Um, let me mark that down. 
So Jamie throws in his call. He's announced a raise. One million. Oh, a million more chips. It'll be the Thorson. Second raise, one million. I'm all in. You're all in? Did he say all in? I'm all in. I call. Jamie cannot wait to show those kings. Yes! Lon, this is like the movie Groundhog Day at the poker table. I'm at 26, yeah, and now hopefully. William Thorson thought he had a good hand going all in with those pocket jacks, but finds himself running into the pocket kings of Jamie Gold. Let's see a king. Here's the flop, ace, three, seven. All those cards miss Thorson. Don't even have a look, just stand here and watch. Lon, I'm going to go out for a cup of coffee and, and call me when Jamie loses a hand. How much does he have, like here? Almost About five million. million. No, almost five. I'll, reach I'll be over 30. Even the great Johnny Chan seems impressed with Gold's achievements. Now here comes the turn card. It's an ace. No help to Thorson. Thorson down to his last card. When the last card comes to blank, we're high five, okay? Well, like Chan, Gold turning away and won't look in this situation. Thorson needs a jack to stay alive. Jamie Gold does it again. And William Thorson is gone in 13th place. No, no, but now is what we do I do? We got 40% of the chips. Now chip. what do I do? The short stuff, still chopping, because they, they, they're so afraid of you. Oh, you had license sh still. Okay, cool. Thank you. Four and a half million more to Jamie Gold, but a milestone knockout for everyone okay, in the field. Players, now have your attention, please. With 12 players remaining, you are all millionaires. Players left. Million bucks. All earn at least a million dollars. Yeah. I might get a car now. I might. <laughs> Lee Force, who never had more than a couple of thousand to his name, now has a million in his pocket. Oh, man. Time to go for 12. Doug Kim has his sights set squarely on the top prize of 12 million, but how about this 23-year-old college student? A bit overwhelmed by the moment, and who could blame him? Back inside the Rio Poker Room, let's get to the outer table where Paul Wasica got lucky when the board paired twice, earning him the check mark with his ace kicker. He's up against Michael Binger, whose pocket pair has been nullified. It's Binger's turn to act after the river card. Binger knows his pocket eights are useless. Uh, you know, if Waska has any card higher than an eight in his hand, Binger would be beat. And Binger bets 1.2 million, trying to put the pressure on Paul Waska. This might be a tough call for Waska. His ace kicker might be good, but if Binger had a queen or a 10 or something like pocket kings or jacks, Waska would be beat. Wasika will make the call. And a good call. And he will take down the pot. And all Michael Binger can do is throw his pocket eights yeah! into the muck. Yeah! What a tear Paul Wasika has been on today. This 25-year-old wins another hand, picks up two and a half million more chips, but he's a guy who's used to living his life in streaks. I have one of the most addictive personalities you'll ever see. <laughs> I was addicted to you know, running and working out in high school. In college, the reason I dropped out was uh, I was addicted to computer games. Picked up bowling. I would bowl like 20 games a day. <laughs> I try to master one thing and then move on. I go at it 100%. That's the same with poker for the last two and a half years. I've just made that my number one priority. It's an addiction. It's what I am compelled to do. I don't know how else to explain it. In the past, I had a hard time sticking with one thing. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna quit anytime soon. I'm just saying whenever it loses the excitement that it provides right now is when I'll probably move on. Waska attended the University of Wisconsin at Madison, Phil Helmuth's old stomping grounds for two and a half years. He wanted to become an engineer, but instead he became an expert in minesweeper. From the KFC Snacker Camp, let's get back to the featured table. Every player remaining has earned a million dollars. Now their next goal is to make the main event final table. There is our chip leader, Jamie Gold, ace queen. And Jamie in the same position he's been in for a long time. He could close his eyes and make his way to the final table at this point. And with ace queen off suit, he'll raise it up to 400,000 to 23 year old Eric Freiberg, a suited 10 8. Remember, Freiberg said Calm. Swedes are better players than Americans, and he's been doing a great job improving it. Freiberg makes the call. 
Uh, but maybe the Swede has met his match. So heads up to the flop. Seems like we say it every time. Gold in the lead. The ace eye for gold is still best. No spades check. in there. Check. They both check. Now the turn card is a 10. Hits Freiburg who takes the lead. Dang those foreigners. Hmm. Gold did pick up a flush draw. One million. <laughs> and here he comes. He hasn't been shy. All in. I call. Well, Freiburg's going to risk it all, and Jamie makes the call. Do you have a flush? flush? No, flush I just have a flush draw. draw. Oh, you're okay. calling me. Okay, that's yeah, okay. Why am I time. calling? Yeah, you're calling. Good luck. Good luck. I got plenty of outs. Come the on. Ace, the queen, and any diamond. Ace, queen, any diamond. He's out. I was sure it was a flush, too, when I first saw it. Why would Gold make that call, Norman? <laughs> because he could. He can afford it. He might feel bulletproof. He's got a good draw, and he's got a chance to knock out a very tough opponent. River card is a three of clubs, and that misses Jamie Gold. So how about that? <laughs> Jamie's mother can't believe it. Eric Freiberg breaks the curse of Jamie Gold and doubles up through the chip leader. And the usual oh, yeah. muted celebration from Eric Freiberg. And he takes a small chunk out of Jamie Gold. Wow. Nice hand. Well, Jamie Gold was bound to stumble sometime or another, but I'm sure Johnny Chan doesn't want to see his pupils' chips go to such a strong player as Eric Freiberg, who's over eight million now. Jamie perhaps wondering if he was correct to call that all in on a draw. Well, now we'll see how our chip leader reacts to adversity. Whole cards of 10-8 of spades from the small blind. He'll make the call back into the fray. Cunningham with ace king of spades. From the big blind, and he's going to raise it up to 400,000. And Gold immediately calls, and we have our long-awaited showdown between amateur Jamie Gold and the much-feared pro Alan Cunningham, the top two stacks in the room. Two spades in the flop, both with a spade flush draw. Gold had checked in the dark. Of course, Cunningham with the nut flush draw. Cunningham bets 400,000. And another quick call from Jamie. So Cunningham with a four to one advantage as we go to the turn. It's an ace of diamonds pairs. Cunningham's ace gives him the check mark. As well as Jamie has played line, you have to believe Alan Cunningham can outplay him heads up every day. He's Alan Cunningham. Gold checks, Cunningham checks. And to the river and there it is. A great card for Cunningham, a six of spades. They both make the flush, Cunningham with the nut flush. Jamie Gold first to act. He comes out with a million chips with the lesser flush. Now, I think he's correct to lead out here. He's got to believe his flush is best. I'll raise it two million. And Cunningham raises it two million more, makes it three million total. And Jamie stands up, and maybe he no longer believes his flush is best. Tough situation for the chip leader. Jamie might think that Cunningham slow played pocket nines, or had pocket aces, and is going to lose to a full house. Johnny Chan wondering how Jamie will play this. I don't know how I can fold this hand. I'm not sure how he can fold it either. I got a flush. I call. He calls, have enough flush. and we'll enough. lose. Yeah. That's a, uh, nice hand. Nice. I can't fold that hand. Yeah, it's the cooler. Two flushes. A couple of setbacks for gold. First, perhaps a suspect call on the all-in, and now maybe a hand he could have gone away from. Two hits to his chip stack, and Alan Cunningham knocking on his door. That's the last thing anyone should want. The World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Welcome back inside the Rio. There you see in the red shirt, John McGill standing because he's all in with pocket fives, putting his tournament life at risk pre-flop. He's a big underdog going to the river against the pocket nines of Fred Goldberg. Five. Only a five will save McGill. It's a king, and Fred Goldberg gets the win and eliminates John McGill. McGill will earn $1.1 million. That's more than the main event champion won as recently as 1999. I can't fold that hand. I had a flush. I, he had the nut flush. I had a flush. Jamie talking to Chan yeah, about that hand he lost to Cunningham. Right? Can't fold that. Yeah, Johnny says, tell it to the judge. <laughs> well, Cunningham inching closer after that last victory over Jamie Gold. 
but goal to sell our dominating chip leader. Now the short stack has become Lee Force, a 23-year-old college student and ultimate Frisbee player extraordinaire. Uh, the Frisbees are gone. He's a millionaire. <laughs> Force with a 9-8 of clubs calls the big blind, which is at 100,000 now. The blind's at 50,000 and 100,000. Jamie Gold, King 7 offsuit. <laughs> One easy oh. green chip for the call. Another millionaire calls. Cunningham, suited 8-5, oh. makes the call. Freiburg, suited 6-3 of hearts. And we're going to have four millionaires to the flop. <laughs> the flop is Jack 10-6, Freiburg pairs his 6, Force with a straight draw. Cunningham checks. Freiburg, a pair of sixes, checks also. Hmm. These are very conservative millionaires. All checked to the turn. Freiburg sixes are still best, but Cunningham got a pair of fives. Allen first to act. He checks. Freiburg now. 200. We'll make it 200,000. Force will call it just on a draw. Jamie Gold folds his cards. So does Alan Cunningham. So Freiburg and Force will go heads up. Freiburg with a big lead to the river. And the river card is an ace, and that gives Freiburg the check mark. He checks. He has the best hand, but with that board, I don't know how Freiburg would know it. 600. Oh, 600. There's a feisty millionaire. Force missed his straight, knows he can only win by shoving out Freiburg. You bet 600, I call you. <laughs> you win. I want to see your hand. No. <laughs> <laughs> the pair of sixes wins it. Lee Force can't believe that Freiburg called him with a oh, pair of sixes. But Freiburg knew that bet stunk to the high heavens. Boy, this Freiburg has carved up every young and brittle American put in front of him. He's a threat to our very way of life. Freiburg said Swedes are the best poker players. Maybe he's right. Back to the outer table where we find that Michael Binger has moved all in with pocket queens. Dan Nassif has Binger covered and dominated. He called with pocket kings. And that gives Nassif a great opportunity to send Dr. Binger packing. The flop is 3-4. Yeah. Queen Bingo for Binger hitting a set of queens. And Nassif says, what can I do? Binger, meanwhile, is signaling for low cards. And Nassif getting a warm-up in, doesn't want to get one of those poker injuries. It's an eight on the turn. Binger flinches, but that card does nothing for Nassif. Nassif is going to need a king and a king only to rally back and knock out Binger. Now the river card, it's an ace. Binger wins the hand, survives his all-in risk, and gets a hug from his brother Nick. He doubles up through Dan Nassif. Binger over three million chips now. And a sigh of relief from one of our new millionaires. This is the first time I've been all in for, for my tournament life since day one. Yes. I've been a big stack the entire tournament until now. Well, momentum shifts are certainly a big part of this main event, and momentum is something that Michael Binger knows a lot about. I went out to Stanford for graduate school, and my thesis was on the physical renormalization of quantum field theories. It involved improving our understanding of quantum field theories, which are the primary tool theoretical physicists use to understand three of the four forces of nature, namely the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. And at the same time, I was kind of becoming disenchanted with what I was doing in graduate school, so I decided to take a year off and do poker. My advisor the, didn't like it at first, I think, because he wanted me to go into academia and get a postdoc job. And, all poker has taken me away from that path, but uh, to make a better hourly rate uh, as a poker player than as a graduate student. <laughs> he can spout all the highfalutin participle physics gibberish he wants. The fact is, he's a part time theoretical physicist. You want my respect, you have to be a full time theoretical physicist. Well, Binger came up with a unique method of describing the running of the strong coupling constant. Now, you have this nice work out there, Stanford. Please. Trust me, if you go all in, I think he's going to call you. <laughs> Lee Force I hope he does. is the short stack at the table. So I'm not going to go with nothing. But you're going to walk out of here as a rich man. 
Uh, all of us have uh, over one million dollars. Yeah, millionaires. Even for the great yeah. Alan yeah, Cunningham, this will be his first million dollar yeah. tournament payday. His cards go into the muck. Eric Freiberg, Queen everyone 10. Muck. Everyone, no, no, don't just call. No, oh, he's smart that man. Evil. <laughs> that is evil. Freiberg just calls a I big call. blind, whittling oh. away at the short stack of fours, who also calls with a seven of hearts. Well, there was no reason for Leaf not to raise there. He might have been able to knock out the smaller big blind. Doug Kim makes the call. Jamie Gold in the big blind. 6-4, off suit, no raises. He checks his option. Come on, dealer. Come on. Four players to the flop. Couple of hearts in there. Freiberg got his queen, though. Yeah, not bad for force, though. He wanted the dealer to help him, and he got some help. Kim checks. Jamie Gold checks with a straight draw. Freiburg checks it. his queens, and there goes Do it. Leaf Force. All in. 150, 230. I can't. He's going to call me. That's for sure. Gold folds, but Freiburg will call. There you go. Queen 10. And okay. This is the degree got, all in us. moment. Yeah, yeah. The Leaf Force all in with an ace high heart draw. Freiburg and Force, each with a chance to become youngest world champion ever. Freiburg with a chance to knock out Force right here. Come on, dealer. Now the turn card. Oh, that red card teased Force, but it's a diamond. That's not what he needed. What Leaf Force is going to need is any heart other than the eight of hearts or an ace to stay alive. Rivers a king, and that's going to do it. Eric Freiburg gets the degree check mark. And Lee Force is eliminated in 11th place, winning $1.1 million. He was quite a life force in this main event. Great run for the 23-year-old. But Lee Force will not become the youngest world champion ever. We are now down to 10 players. One more to go before we have our final table. The Degree All-In Moment is brought to you by Degree for Men. Protects men who take risks. Ten players remain. These men are all now millionaires, but the $12 million game of musical chairs is not over. Only nine will sit at the final table. Two men have been running circles around the rest, and neither looks to be giving up his seat. Another one out. So the question remains, who will be seated with them, and which one will be left standing? Back inside the Rio Poker Room with 10 men still playing. 11 and a half million chips separates gold from second place Alan Cunningham, who has twice as many as third place Richard Lee. Wasika, Goldberg, and Binger bring up the rear. And now the final 10 players at the same table looking for the final nine. Jamie Gold, the leader, 28 and a half million chips in second place. Alan Cunningham, four World Series of Poker bracelets. And Michael Binger, our Dr. Michael Binger, theoretical part -time physicist. part-time theoretical physicist. <laughs> he is the short stack right now. It's amazing how long these fellows have had to play to get down from 9,000 players now looking to get down to the final nine. Binger with a jack-10 off suit. The blind's at 60 and 120,000, and he raises it to 450,000. Jamie Gold is suited, 5-4. And he'll join the party. He'll make the call. So these two will go heads up. Binger with the advantage going to the flop. Good luck. Thank you. Binger the short stack against the biggest stack, Jamie Gold. And now the flop. Queen, queen, queen. You don't see that every day. <laughs> and this is actually a situation, if you have a pocket pair, you like your hand. Neither has a pocket pair. Both check. To the turn we go. It's a nine of clubs. Gold with a club draw. Binger with a straight draw. See if either one wants to take a stab at it. Nope, they both check. And to the river we go. It's an eight. Binger hits his straight and earns the check mark. Michael Binger checks. Binger might be concerned that Gold has paired something on that board. All in. And Gold is going to try to push Michael Binger all in. Johnny Chan should go over there and... Either hit Jamie or hug him. <laughs> Give it up, Jamie. It's not a move. Please. It is a move and a great one. Can Binger see through it? The problem is if he's wrong, he's gone, and he doesn't make the final table. You remove both of those cards. <laughs> Except for the other two queens. 
He might have played, he says, and Binger falls. Goal takes down the hand. Ten Jack. Binger shows the table. He had a straight. That's right. <laughs> we both have full houses. He'll call, and then, you know, what are you going to do? Correct, but Jamie had nothing. <laughs> he made the straight, but it's a little rough out there. And boy. Yeah. That's not the hand you want to straight on. He no. could have doubled up, but facing elimination from the big stack bully, Michael Binger opted to bow out with hopes of playing another day. The 2006 World Series of Poker is presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, brewed for a man's taste, Miller Brewing Company, and in part by ParadisePoker.net, home of the free million dollar poker tournament, and Harris Entertainment, home of the world's richest poker tournament. The World Series of Poker Championship Moments. It was perhaps the greatest two-year run in main event history. Dan Harrington survived two of the largest fields ever to finish third in 2003 and fourth in 2004. Harrington's remarkable, almost unthinkable back-to-back -back run at the final table is over. But his crowning achievement came a decade earlier when he won it all. Dan Harrington, our 1995 World Champion. All right. Being the winner of the tournament is nice, even though objectively the accomplishment wasn't as great as coming in third and fourth two years in a row. Just nice to end up being acknowledged as the best player in the world, at least for one year. It was a nice feeling the first time I fondled the million dollars. Welcome back inside the Rio. This World Series of Poker presented by Milwaukee's Best Light has 10 players left and Jamie Gold remains our overwhelming chip leader. Dan Harrington made three main event final tables in a 10 year period. We should mention a man who never won the big one, Jesse Alto. He made six main event final tables, six in a 13 year span from 1976 to 88. Action on Michael Binger with ace queen. I'm all in. And everything he's got goes into the pot. I knew that was coming. Now Fred Goldberg from the big blind. I call. With pocket tents, he makes the call. Binger went all in with his last 1.5 million chips and his tournament life on the line. Hold off one time. Binger in danger of being the last one out before our final table. Goldberg with the advantage with a pocket pair. And Binger's girlfriend and brother rooting him on. Two likable guys, the contractor and the physicist. Binger in for his tournament life again behind. Now the flop. Seven, six, deuce, all oh, clubs, neither has a club. Goldberg's 10 still lead. Binger, a three to one underdog now. Come on, hold up. He gets running clubs, split the pot, I'll take that. Making a million's not enough, he wants the final table. Turn card now. Oh, the ace for Binger! To take the lead. No club, no 10. If it's a 10, make it a 10 of clubs, though. If, if it's a 10, make it a 10 of clubs. Right. With any club, they would split no the pot. Goldberg can knock out Binger only with the 10 of hearts. Don't do the one outer thing. It's not very fun. Now the river card is a jack, and Binger doubles up Woo! through Fred Goldberg. Oh what do you got? You're amazing. Queen against King. For a guy who had not gone all in since day one, Michael Binger is getting his share of thrills tonight. So you gotta be happy for Binger. You've gotta feel bad for Goldberg. So still 10 players remain. Oh, brother. Goldberg the victim just under three million. Binger the victor just over three million. Goldberg was that close to securing a spot at the final table, but he couldn't complete the knockout of Binger. So despite winning that pot, Michael Binger still finds himself in eighth place. Goldberg and Nassif are the short stacks. Gold and Cunningham sitting pretty as we now point towards the final table. There is Dan Nassif. It's a long day, Lon. Nassif looking tired. Goldberg looking exasperated. On the Milwaukee's best light pocket cam, queen three. I'm all in. Wow. Now he's looking to just pick up the blinds and annies with that move. Gold falls behind him, as does Butler. Now to Richard Lee. Pocket Kings. Call. And, of course, a call from Richard Lee. Called to duty to settle the final table roster with Fred Goldberg all in. Richard Lee's family still nervous. I'm not blinding out. 
He didn't want to get winded out, Juan, but he's in an almost worst case all-in scenario here. Boy, I wish he'd waited for a better spot. So Goldberg on the ropes as we go to the flop. The flop is seven, nine, on, seven. Guys. That does little for Goldberg, and he knows it. Yeah, almost nothing Black will save Fred Black Goldberg card. now. He'd need running queens, running threes, or running hearts. Now the turn card. Black it's a jack. That's yeah. going to do it. Goldberg is gone. Richard Lee does the deed. He's been on a huge rush, went from a short stack to sitting on 11 million chips. And so the man sometimes mistaken for Chris Moneymaker will not replicate Moneymaker's 2003 championship run. Fred Goldberg falls one spot short of the final table. There you have it, an elite group of poker players from which will come our new world champion. 8,773 is now just nine, but which of these men will be crowned World yes. Series champion? Yes. Yes. Can Alan Cunningham bring the title back to the professionals? Yes. Will Richard Lee's premonition come true? Will Paul Wasika finish the task at hand? Yes. Can Michael Binger come back from the brink of elimination to win the whole thing? Yeah, baby. Will Doug Kim or Eric Freiberg be the youngest to win the big one? Can yes, Jamie baby. Gold continue his dominance? Yes. For one of these nine men, $12 million awaits. Next time, it's the final table. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. Thanks for watching the World Series of Poker.